And Joe Biden, when in doubt, you got to play the race card. So Joe Biden yesterday honored Emmett Till and his mother with a new national monument, which is all that, that's fine. I mean, Emmett Till obviously was lynched, he was assassinated for the great crime of apparently having allegedly wolf whistled a white lady in the in the pre civil rights era South. And uh, his mom made the brave move of having an open casket at his funeral and uh, and pointing out that these are the wages of racism. And so now the federal government is going to establish the Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley National Monument, which is going to be in a few different places. It's not it's not just one place. The monument honors not only Emmett Till, but also his mother, who became a renowned civil rights advocate. According to a White House official, the new monument will protect places that tell the story of Emmett Till's too short life and racially motivated murder, the unjust acquittal of his murderers and the activism of his mother, who courageously brought the world's attention to the brutal injustices and racism of the time, catalyzing the civil rights movement. And it will include things like the Roberts Temple Church of God in Christ in Chicago. That is where Till's funeral service was held. Also, the Grabal Landing in Mississippi, where it's believed that Till's body was recovered from the Tallahatchie River. That will be the second location. And the third location will be at the Tallahatchie County Second District Courthouse in Mississippi, where Till's killers were acquitted. Okay, all of that, you know, it is worth remembering the evils of American history in order so that we can see how far we've come. That's not the real reason why Joe Biden is doing this. The reason that Joe Biden is doing this, as you can see from the announcement, the real reason that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are doing this is so that they can pretend that there are a bunch of Republicans who are just like the murderers of Emmett Till. That is the way they do this. It really is gross. Again, this should be something about which Americans are fairly united. I would hope universally united. American racism is evil. Racism is bad. The murder of people on the basis of their skin, evil, right? We should all be on the same side of that. So why is it that this administration is now using this announcement of the monument in order to go after Ron DeSantis in Florida and falsely claim that Florida is replete with the same kind of racism. It's really gross. So Biden let it off yesterday. He was talking about complicity and complicity in racism. And as you'll see, this morphs very, very quickly into an attack on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's political opponents. It was a lesson I learned of coming out of not like real leaders in the civil rights movement, but I came out of the civil rights movement as a kid. I was a public defender, and I used to, uh, you know, I used to say, think that if you pass something that was good, you can make hate go away. Hate never goes away. It just hides. It hides under the rocks. And given a little bit of oxygen by bad people, it comes roaring out again. And it's up to all of us to deal with that. Up to all of us to stop it. Up to all of us. The best way to do this is with the truth. No, no, it's in a different no, no, no. context, but I think it apl- applies here. Silence is complicity. I will not be silent, nor will you be silent about what happened. Okay, again, when he says things like it, it doesn't go away, it just hides under rocks. So first of all, racism in the United States has abated beyond any other Western country by a long shot. Again, look at the polling with regards to, for example, interracial marriage. It went from virtually no one in the United States was in favor of interracial marriage to everyone in the United States is fine with interracial marriage by the polling data. Okay, but according to Joe Biden, it never goes away. It just goes to hide. So what does he mean by that? What does he mean? Well, you know what the implication is. The implication is that even though those evil Republicans who oppose Joe Biden won't openly be racist, quietly, they're very racist. Kamala Harris, who, you know, is obviously ramping up for the possibility that Joe Biden just keels over any day because he looks like he's going to keel over any day. She really just says the quiet part out loud. She just goes right after Ron DeSantis in Florida. Again, there's a reason why they're linking these two issues. Today, there are those in our nation who would prefer to erase or even rewrite the ugly parts of our past. Those who attempt to teach that enslaved people benefited from slavery. Those who insult us in an attempt to gaslight us who try to divide our nation with unnecessary debates. Let us not be seduced into believing that somehow we will be better if we forget. Okay, so number one, no one's forgetting. People get taught about Emmett Till in Florida schools. What she's saying here, which is that these are, it's unnecessary to have debates over America's history. Really? Since you guys are the ones who pushed the 1619 Project, you're the ones who suggest that America's racial history means that today the only solution is quote unquote racial equity when it comes to government policy, i.e. reverse racism in American government policy. This is what they're doing. This is, it's, it's super gross. It's really gross. Honestly, find me the American politician 
of either party today who's like, yeah, I'm a big, I'm standing for Emmett Till's murderers. Like, who are those people? They don't exist, but it doesn't matter because Kamala Harris believes, and she wants you to believe, that really down deep, Republicans are very much in favor of black people being murdered for no reason at all. She did this, by the way. She was saying all of this during the Emmett Till announcement, which is super disgusting. I mean, it really is gross. Here was Joe Biden doing the same exact thing. At a time when there are those who seek to ban books, bury history, we're making it clear, crystal, crystal clear. While darkness and denialism can hide much, they erase nothing. They can hide, but they erase nothing. We can't just choose to learn what we want to know. We have to learn what we should know. These people are liars. We should know about our country. We should know everything, the good, the bad, the truth of who we are as a nation. They're such gaslighting liars. They're such liars. They're liars. Okay, all of this gets taught in Florida schools. Nothing that Ron DeSantis has passed in the state of Florida, signed into law in the state of Florida, bars the teaching of American history. On the contrary, it preserves the teaching of American history by preventing the inculcation of lies into the curriculum. Lies like, if you are black, you're inherently victimized in the United States. And if you are white, you're inherently privileged in the United States of America. And that all systems of power in the United States are created for the explicit promotion of white people. That's what critical race theory teaches. That's what they're attempting to ban in the state of Florida. Not teaching about the evils of American history or white supremacy. What, like, it's a lie. They're liars and it's disgusting. You know a company is looking out for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it. This is great news for new and current PeerTalk customers. PeerTalk just added data to every plan and includes a mobile hotspot with no price increase whatsoever. If you've considered PeerTalk before but haven't made the switch, take a look again. For just 20 bucks a month, you'll get unlimited talk, text, and now 50% more 5G data plus their new mobile hotspot. This is why I love PeerTalk. They're veteran-owned. They only hire the best customer service team located right here in the United States of America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in the country. Remember, you vote with how you spend your cash. So stop supporting companies that hate your guts. When you go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro, you'll save an additional 50% off your very first month of coverage because they actually value you as a customer. That's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Again, Pure Talk, wireless for Americans by Americans. I have Pure Talk coverage myself. I use it for all my business calls. Their coverage is great because their network is one of the best networks in the country. Head on over to puretalk.com slash Shapiro. You'll save an additional 50% off your very first month of coverage right now. puretalk.com slash Shapiro. That's Pure Talk. Wireless for Americans by Americans. Go check them out right now. When I wake up every morning, my kids wake me up. This, this morning was my, my three-year-old. She woke me up fairly early. She's being very cute. But the only thing that could get me going is my Black Rifle coffee. Black Rifle coffee literally fuels the Daily Wire. Our office drinks about 40 pounds of their coffee every single week. If you haven't tried Black Rifle coffee yet, you need to. A great place to start is their complete the mission fuel sampler, giving you a taste of the entire spectrum of Black Rifle coffee flavor profiles. Offering four ounce bags of the following roasts. The Silencer Smooth, the AK-47 Espresso, Beyond Black and Just Black. The only hard part will be picking a favorite amongst these classic roasts. Black Rifle Coffee is a veteran-founded coffee company operated by principled men and women who honor those who protect, defend, and support our country with every purchase you make. They give back. Stop running out of coffee. Sign up for a coffee club subscription. To have Black Rifle Coffee delivered straight to your door on a schedule, you'll never forget about your coffee again. Go to blackriflecoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro at checkout for 10% off your order. That's blackriflecoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro, 10% off. You can also find Black Rifle Coffee in grocery and convenience stores near you. Black Rifle Coffee is America's coffee. It truly is gross. Because again, there is no disagreement in the United States about the evils of American history when it comes to racism and white supremacy. There's no disagreement about that. The only disagreement is that you guys all say that the white supremacy is still there lurking underneath America's surface and that all of America's key institutions from capitalism to the meritocracy have been infused by that evil racism. And thus, if you oppose the democratic agenda, secretly you are a white supremacist. Secretly you're in league with Emmett Till's murderers. That's the case they're trying to make. Some of them are even more open. ABC News's Mary Bruce actually openly tried to connect Ron DeSantis to the lynching of Emmett Till. Now, the president's announcement, the president who is roughly the same age that Till would have been, it comes as we are seeing this controversial and very polarizing debate in this country over the teaching of black history, that move by the Florida Board of Education to teach that some slaves may have benefited from the skills they developed is sparking a firestorm. But Robin, this White House says that monuments like this to Till will help to teach the complete story of our nation's history, Robin. Yes, how about Ron DeSantis and the evils? Meanwhile, MSNBC host Andrea Mitchell, another objective journalismer, she comments, quote, this is also happening as some states are being accused of chipping away at the teaching of black history, the accurate teaching. Ron DeSantis has been accused by the Washington Post editorial board just yesterday of trying to, quote, whitewash slavery. It's it's so disgusting. 
It's so clearly disgusting. And then there's the secondary disgustingness. So Greg Gutfeld is on Fox News doing a show, and he was talking about all of these false accusations with regard to Ron DeSantis, all the lies that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are talking about, about how American history won't be taught, black history won't be taught in Florida schools anymore, which is a lie. It is not true. It is a lie. Okay, so Gutfeld was talking about the part of the curriculum that says that some slaves cultivated skills they could use for their personal benefit after slavery, which is clearly true. And he makes the pretty much unobjectionable point that even in the worst circumstances human beings could possibly be in, they cultivate skills because this is how human beings adapt and survive. And it demonstrates their resiliency. Even in the worst places human beings can be, they cultivate skills that they can then use for their personal benefit afterward. And he makes the comparison to Viktor Frankl writing Man's Search for Meeting after the Holocaust. The notion that he was able to cultivate certain spiritual levels through suffering in the Holocaust. And, uh, and naturally, then the left jumps on that. It's just, it's amazing. Here, here's Greg Gutfeld. Do you think that she read the whole thing and just decided to cherry pick something? I, I do think that she read the whole thing. And I think that it's an incredibly complex piece. When you look at the 191 passages, you have some good. And, and frankly, I'm just fundamentally uncomfortable with the sentence that blacks benefited at all from this. And, I, you know, it made me think as someone, obviously I'm not black, but I'm Jewish. Would someone say about the Holocaust, for instance, that there were some benefits for Jews, right? While they were hanging out in concentration camps, you learned a strong work ethic, right? Maybe you learned a new skill. Did you ever Would read it- Man's Search for Meaning? Vic Frankel talks about how you had to survive in a concentration yeah. camp by having skills. You had to be useful. Utility. Utility okay. kept you but alive. But we're also talking about middle schoolers here. Okay, uh, again, what Gutfeld says there is absolutely unobjectionable. As an Orthodox Jew, you know, and thank God, my, my immediate family, our family line was in America since the early 20th century, but the entire extended family was in Europe at the time of the Holocaust, so we lost a lot of you know, distant relations and family relations in Europe during the Holocaust. And of course, <laughs> I'm deeply ensconced in the Jewish community, so pretty much everybody knows a Holocaust survivor. What he is saying there, which is that the durability and the adaptability of human beings, the resiliency of human beings in terrible circumstances leads them to cultivate skills that are useful to them in the rest of their lives, even in the worst circumstances, one of the glories of being a human being. That's unobjectionable. So what does the White House do? They immediately call him an anti-Semite. And now he didn't even bring it up, right? Jessica Tarlov brought it up. But wait for the wait for the, the usual cast of characters to sound off. So Andrew Bates says what Fox News was allowed to be said on the air yesterday is an obscenity in defending a horrid, dangerous, extreme lie that insults the memory of millions of Americans who suffer from the evil of enslavement. A Fox News told another horrid, dangerous and extreme lie that insults the memory of the millions of people who suffer from the evils of the Holocaust. There was nothing good about slavery. There was nothing good about the Holocaust. Full stop. No one said there was anything good about slavery or the Holocaust. They said that resilient human beings sometimes are capable of making the best of their, their horrific situations, which, of course, is true. That, of course, is true. That's the story of the heroism of the slaves, making the best of one of the world's worst situations in human history. Same thing of Holocaust survivors, like trying to trying to survive, trying to cultivate a skill set while undergoing the worst horrors a human being can imagine. Of course, they have to lie. They have to lie. I, I, first of all, I don't want to hear this White House talk about anti-Semitism because this White House is replete with anti-Semitism. This White House is perfectly willing to roast on a spit the state of Israel in front of Iran. They're perfectly willing to do it. You know, they, they are perfectly willing to bend over backwards for the likes of Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. It, it, them talking about anti-Semitism, I mean, it's, you want to talk about ridiculous gaslighting, that would be it. All guys, the rest of the show continues right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be jumping into the mailbag. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click that link in the description and join us.